So in this video, we're going to talk about Fresnel diffraction or Fresnel propagation. And you might say, well, what, first of, all, first of all, why would I care about Fresnel diffraction and why, why is this interesting? Uh, well, we've been talking about Fraunhofer diffraction and we said that if we had some aperture with some aperture function, let's call it g in of x, we can figure out what the pattern formed by this aperture if it's illuminated by some plane wave, let's call this our plane wave at the input, uh, then we can figure out what the pattern looks like at some distance far away on some screen. And let's call this, we call this pattern G out uh, as a function of XS. So this is our XS coordinate. And let's call this the origin. So XS equals zero. Uh, and let's say that, I don't know, maybe this is X equals zero. They should, they should line up just to make our lives easy. But for Fraunhofer diffraction, we made a couple assumptions. So first of all, we made the assumption uh, that this angle theta, our viewing angle, is small. So our distance, in other words, our distance to the screen is much larger than any uh, than the size of our screen. So we, you can write that as xs is much less than d. And that's still a reasonable approximation for a Fresnel diffraction, so we're going to stick with that. But the other approximation we made was that this aperture uh, that, let me just erase this real quick, uh, that this aperture was small compared to the screen. So our x-coordinate, in other words, uh, or let's say the total size of our aperture a uh, is much smaller than any screen that we're interested in. But in optical systems, that's not going to be the case. Like in, in general, that's not going to be true because we might have, say we're interested in propagating through a lens, for example, and then we're focusing or, and then we're interested in what happens on another lens. So this aperture or the, the size of this lens is pretty much the same as the size of this lens. So let's call this A1 and A2. Uh, so we're, we're kind of stuck here. We can't use Fraunhofer diffraction for propagation through optical systems, and we need to relax our assumptions. And this is where Fresnel diffraction comes in. And so our aperture is going to be comparable to whatever screen. And this is just really a conceptual screen. And this is a conceptual aperture because we're interested in how electromagnetic fields evolve through space. These are just constructs to make our, our lives simpler. So uh, how do we go about figuring out what the electromagnetic field is or what pattern we see at this screen? Uh, well, we can follow the same exact treatment as we did before and uh, with, with Fraunhofer diffraction, except we're not going to make a couple critical, we're not going to make the last critical assumption. So uh, with Fraunhofer diffraction, or after we made the paraxial approximation, we wrote the overall electromagnetic field, so G out as a function of X, let me erase some of this stuff here. So we wrote g out as a function of x as this e to the i k or e to the j k d over d, and uh, there's also some extra. So there's some extra factors out here. Uh, j lambda is the extra factor, but I'm going to ignore those for now and just call everything call everything out front a naught. So we just don't have to deal with it because it's not not horribly important. Uh, so the, the critically important part is what's inside the integral here. So it's some coefficient or some bunch of coefficients a naught uh, times g in as a function of x, e to the j k uh, x s, so this is the coordinate on our screen, minus x, this is the coordinate that we're integrating over on our aperture, squared divided by 2d, and then this is integrated over x. And this is it, this is the Fresnel integral. If you wanted to actually compute uh, what the pattern was, you just need to carry out this integral. Uh, and that's really all there is to it. So this is g out of x s. And you can actually do this integral on a computer, uh, although really you do it as a sum. But it's not terribly satisfying. Uh, we we really don't like leaving things in terms of integrals because it's hard to interpret what that actually means.
And so there's a couple more interesting ways of writing this integral. Uh, and my personal favorite, uh, or the, the beginnings of my personal favorite, is you can write this as a convolution. So notice that we've got some coordinate, which we're interested in, that's our final coordinate, minus some dummy variable in one of our functions, and just the dummy variable in the other function. And that is just a convolution. So that's, we can write this integral as g in of uh, x of s convolved with e to the j k, uh, actually in this case it's just x s, e to the j k x s squared over 2 d. So we've, we've, got, we've also got an a naught out front. So we can rewrite this uh, as a convolution. And that's kind of interesting because that tells us that we've got our input uh, spectrum, or not our input spectrum, but our input field. And we're sort of just smearing it out uh, with this phase term. Uh, and it's not exactly clear what that means at this point. But we know if we don't want to deal with convolutions, or if you don't know this, uh, you should really take a class on the Fourier transform because this is Fourier optics. Um, but if we don't want to deal with convolutions, we can just apply the Fourier transform because this turns convolution into multiplication. So if we just blindly apply the Fourier transform to both sides, uh, we'll get g out, which is now a function of kx. So this is the Fourier transform uh, where I'm defining g out of kx as the integral. So this is just the Fourier transform, g in of x e to the minus j kx times x integrated over x. And so this is just the Fourier transform in terms of this frequency kx. Uh, so g out of kx is just equal to some new coefficient b naught. So we're, we're going to have to normalize stuff. Uh, so this is going to turn into something weird. Um, g in of kx times, and then this, if you take the Fourier transform of this function here, uh, excluding the normalization constant, it's just e to the minus j. Well, let me erase this arrow real quick. e to the minus j d times kx squared over 2k. And this allows me to figure out the system's transfer function h, uh, which is just g out as a function of kx over g in as a function of kx. Uh, this is just equal to some coefficient b naught times e to the minus j uh, d kx squared over 2k. And B naught just contains some terms to make sure the units work out and make sure we have energy conservation from one plane to another. So if we instead work with the Fourier transforms of the input and the output fields, our lives become a lot simpler because to calculate the output field now, so G out of Kx, this is just rewriting what we have above, you just multiply by this transfer function uh, h, which is a function of kx and d and k as well, uh, multiply by our input, g in of kx. And this is wonderfully simple. If you're an electrical engineer like myself, you're just overjoyed by this because you're like, wow, optics is just reduced now to multiplication and Fourier transformation. And if I wanted the uh, output field, so if I wanted it as a function of xs or the, the coordinate on the screen, uh, all I need to do is take the inverse Fourier, Fourier transform of g out of kx. Now, granted, this is a little more complicated, and this is probably going to involve a computer, uh, unless your pattern is particularly simple, like a, like a rectangle function or maybe even, maybe even a circle. But if we can just figure out a way to interpret this, uh, so a way to interpret this, a way to understand it in terms of this frequency uh, kx, then our lives will become much easier because all propagation is just reduced to multiplication and Fourier transformation. And this will be the subject of the next few videos on the angular spectrum uh, of our input, or this is, uh, this is how we're going to interpret kx. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, if you did, please give it a like down below and subscribe to my channel. Uh, also, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those down below and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.